But then, yeah, you've got these, these bits here, right? Now, what is this 2, this almost minus 2? There's a shift that's going to happen. Now, which way is it going to go? To the right. To the right. Are you sure? No, to the left. To the left? No, it's going to be to the Should I get them to vote? I could, I could. Okay, now hold on a second. Before we settle this argument, okay? Just pause for a minute. Before we settle this argument, because we will, okay? Imagine if this is not you arguing in a classroom with your friend, or you arguing with your teacher or a textbook that's going to give you the answer. If it were just you and your own brain, right? And like no Desmos allowed and all that kind of thing. What would you do to work out? I know it's to the left or to the right, but which one would it be? How would you do that? What do you reckon, Zaki? Again, I'm not looking for, like, I think the answer is this. I want to know how would you check whether your answer is correct? Any, any suggestions? What, what did you say? I could substitute some values in. That might be handy, right? So, for example, if I put in a value like, say, x equals, what would you like to pick? Two. I'm going to go with two. You'll see why in a second, right? You really could choose anything, but two will be helpful for us for a reason that will become very apparent, right? If I put two into this, what happens to this? Two minus two squared, it gives you zero, right? So you see how I'm sort of expecting when x equals zero normally, you get zero, but now I'm saying when x equals two, that's all the way over here, right? Now you get y equals zero, like so. Sorry, that was not well done. doesn't matter. It's a rough graph. Okay. I'm getting to that. I haven't, I haven't looked at that last bit yet. I'm just thinking about where it's going left and right. By the way, how do we know it was left and right rather than say up and down? This thing here. What's it attached to, this nice suit? It's attached to the x, which is which axis? The horizontal axis, right? So that's why I know I'm going left or right. And by testing 2, and I saw, oh, the y value I would get is 0, right? That's where I've gone. That's true, but I didn't get negative 2, did I? Right? When I put in positive 2, I got an intercept. Okay? So this guy here would be minus, and then there's the x minus 2 all squared. Right? Um, okay, so now I've got the last bit, right? I've covered this and this. It's a parabola. The last thing I've got is this guy, and it shifts us again. It's not left to right. How did I know? I've already done the x-axis. And you could write this another way that might make it a little more obvious. This is really y plus 1 is this. Do you agree with that? I added 1 to both sides. So do you see this 1 doesn't touch the x at all. It's really mucking around with this guy. It's an up-down factor. Does that make sense? Up or down? Down. 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 Do you remember we were looking at this and we were like, hmm, minus. Minus is to the left, right? But there's kind of this like opposite effect. Right? When that's a minus sign, I go to the right. That's positive. Right? See this y plus 1? That's a, it, it looks positive, but it's, it's the opposite. It's going to go down. And you can, again, you can test a point to verify this for yourself. So I'm going to take this guy, and instead of going through 2 comma 0, it's going to go through 2 comma negative, negative 1. So I'm going to sort of draw it down like that. Now, Ishan suggested testing out this value, 2, right? The reason why I went with it is because I knew, because of the way this was written, this form tells me not just random piece of information, it tells me the vertex. Do you see that there? That's the vertex. That's the piece of information that I know I want anyway, right? So I'm going to go for that because I'm going to have to label it anyway. If I'd picked some other point, later on I'd have to test to find this anyway, okay? So now, we'll draw this properly because mine are all a terrible mess, right? Um, here's a proper big graph. It needs to be bigger in that direction. So, <clears throat> do you remember this morning, I started to draw and then I was like, uh-oh, I got more information and I realized my graph looked wrong. I was like, oh no, I've got to rub this out because my numbers are no longer to scale. Okay? I know where the... <laughs> Thanks, Sarang. I know where the vertex is, 2 comma negative 1. Having a look at even my rough drawing, what is the one other piece of information that my graph requires? The y-intercept. We already established there's no x-intercepts. How do I find the y-intercept? Minus one. Minus five. Is it this guy? We had this argument this morning, didn't we? Right? Is it just this number on the end? Yes. What form is this written in? Oh, what form is it written in? It's in general form, right? It's ax squared plus bx plus c. Right? So if I put in x equals zero, which is how to find the y-intercept into all of here, what happens to these guys? 
If they all become zero, I can disregard them. You just get left with negative five. Okay. So now that I know that, I'm going to put negative five in an appropriate spot onto my set of axes. I'm going to go negative one, two, three, four, five. There's negative five. I'm going to go through that point. Okay. And now I can work out where appropriately two comma negative one should be because now I have like actual scale on here I can use, right? So I'm going to go one, two. That means two comma negative one is about there. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm even going to label it like so. Okay. There are no x-intercepts. I've got the only intercept that's there, so now I can actually join this thing up. And I'm, I mean, it's not the best. Uh, you guys should be using a ruler. I'm not because I don't have one. Um, but I'm pretty happy otherwise with all of the features that are on there. What are you thinking, Miss Lees? I love it. The only thing that I even possibly add is there's one other very easy... Oh, yeah you could do if you wanted to make it really nice. Any Very thoughts? Point. The you, the vertex. Say it louder. The other side. Which one? The opposite of Just go over here. Where would it be? On the other side. Where would it be? Come on. Here? Yeah. Mm. What is it? Uh, five, five. Oh. Why is that such a nice, easy point, guys? Have a look. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you. Right, and you can see it. I haven't drawn it on, but now let me put it on there so you can see. Yeah. They are. That's the beautiful thing. They're there. There's my axis of symmetry, right? And by the way, if you wanted, you could just double check minus b which is negative four in this case, on 2a, which is negative two in this case. Negative four and negative two is indeed two, isn't it? Which is what we verified before, but we used completing the square to get there, right? Does that make sense? And this is actually what we call vertex form of the parabola because when you look at it, you're like, there's the vertex, uh, two, negative one. That's the way I would read it, okay? Probably should label that equation as well. Minus x squared, did I say plus 4x? Minus 5. Okay. So, we have now in our toolbox all these different ways to look at this. Sarah, did you have a question or a thought? Uh, great question. Could you read it off there for me? Could anyone read it off? Yeah, x equals 2. x equals 2. It's x equals because it's what kind of line? It's vertical. By the way, I'm going to emphasize that because later on in this course, we're going to look at parabolas that don't have vertical lines of symmetry. So we'll leave that for another day, but it's, for, now, it's, for now it's important. It's x equals 2 because it's up and down, yeah, this axis. And I can read that because it goes through the vertex I already worked out.